cross cart fans. So my garage is an absolute mess and I need to clean it. This thing is hard to move around even though it's rolling now, uh, there's no steering on it. So to clean my garage, I have to get this thing more mobile. So today's gonna be suspension and steering. Let's get to it. All right, so for suspension, I'm going to use these. These are Fox Podium Shocks off the front end of a Polaris Predator 500. I looked up the spring rate. These have 160 pounds per inch spring rate uh, once this is all squished. But you can see the amount of adjustment on here. It's not gonna be hard to get the preload we're after using this. Now the stock Razor 800 mounts the shocks on the top A-arm. I'm gonna mount it on the bottom A-arm. So I'm just gonna make some tabs coming off of here, run it up to here. I've got this bar to use. I've got this triangulation point for the top mount. So the shock should be pretty easy. I hope I'm not jinxing myself. And secondly, the steering. Now I'm gonna go with my tried and true uh, steering rack. I've used this on all my buggies. Um, I like it. It's replaceable, it's rebuildable, it's customizable. That's why I like it so much. Now on this, remember that since we are running the tie rods on the back side of the hub, this is actually gonna go with the steering yoke towards the front instead of towards the back. So makes it kind of nice. So we'll get that mounted up. Now for the tie rods themselves, uh, this is a custom machine which takes custom parts. Uh, making those custom parts can be easy, can be hard. Now I looked up custom length tie rods and they were hundreds of dollars, which I don't like to spend that much. So what I have are three eighths. There's a left and a right hand. These are Heim joints with bungs. Bolts are nice and long. So we're gonna have tons of adjustment on here. Now these fit into a three quarter inch outside diameter DOM tube. The wall thickness of this is 0 0.065. They fit really well. So we can make any length we want of tie rods. And these are like 12 to $16 a pair. This whole length of tubing was $13. So we have super inexpensive tie rods. Let's get it set up. And here we have it, a uh, simple bracket made out of inch and a half square tubing, a little bit thicker wall since it's holding the steering. And I use these riv nuts in here. So this piece is not tacked in yet. This is your steering support bar. And this will just slide right onto it. So you can adjust the height. You can center it perfectly and then tack it in place. So nice. So now I'm just going to mark center on this, get it mounted up, and I'm just going to tack it because I don't know what this angle is going to be yet. Or actually, I don't even need to tack it. It's kind of holding itself in there. So now I'm going to get started on these tie rods. We'll make those up, and then we'll start setting up the steering. Now, before we can make our tie rods, we have to set the steering rack up. We're just going to pop this heim joint off. I don't use the Himes because this wrap is the incorrect distance. I make my own custom ends that are adjustable so that we have zero bump steer. My personal method is to get some graded bolts that are the same thread as the rack. And what I'm gonna do is just make a bracket that will hold the other end of our U-joint. It's a weld together piece, it's not too hard to make. Uh, these bolts are fairly inexpensive, so if you happen to break it, you can just build a new one in minutes. All 
All right, so now this is finished up. We can get our actual heim joint here and we can measure for clearance. All right, so here's the full setup. I've got one heim over here. It's set about halfway out. I cut a tie rod length. Now I used 14 inches and we've got custom brackets right here coming off here. These are fully adjustable for bump steer. So we can tune out every last bit of that bump steer with these. Got this centered. I moved the cross brace forward. I'm starting about with that for Ackerman. Nothing's even tacked yet because we can do the final geometry of the whole steering system before we tack anything because everything fits just so tightly without any weld on it. Now you are going to want to cut your tie rods a little long because you can always take away material, but you can't add material. So my toe is pretty far in. I might need to take a half inch off of my tie rods. And there we go. Beautiful. Beautiful. And that's a steering rack and custom tie rods made easy. All right, so for the front shock mounts, I think I'm gonna get a piece of plate. I'm gonna line it up, I'm gonna cut it to fit, tack it onto here. Now what that does is it gives us an awesome platform for mounting our shock. It gives us a nice flat surface so our brackets can be nice. And on a previous build, I used this plate to make multiple shock positions. And we can also adjust the height from the bottom. We can, we can secure it down right on top of this plate, or we can bring it up a little bit to help with our top mounts. Now, if I brought this up and it looks like an inch and a quarter, I can get to this bar pretty easily. And I've got plenty of clearance on this upper A arm. And I can have multiple shock positions to, for a softer ride or more ground clearance so that I can set it up for two different riding styles. Now all this is just gonna be tacked in because we need to get all of the weight on this two seat cross cart before we do our final shock. I mean, we only have so much preload to work with, so we have to use our shock angles and mounting positions to help with that. All right, so I've got my bottom plate. It's just sitting in here. I made up this bracket. Now, if you're gonna have two different shock positions, Make sure the inboard side is lower than the outboard so you have clearance for your spring. I made top two mounts, same as the rear. I just cut a piece of one and a half inch tubing, whole saw cut it in half. I've got it attached to this crossbar. And now I'm just gonna set the shock in. I have it set on its outboard side because that's where you're gonna get the least clearance from the upper A arm. So then we can start to measure this up and figure out where it's going to go and also i have two one was for the right side but you could have two different shock positions uh, changing your shock position in the on the top side of the shock leaves your spring rates the same but lowers the chassis so we're going to have two different spring rates essentially and we're going to have two different ride heights and any combination of these four or five or six or however you want to do yours is how it can be done. So now I'm just going to get this in place, make sure I have clearance, measure the distance from this tube to this hole, or make some tabs to come off of here. Now, something I'm going to do to make this super easy, I'm going to measure this angle here. That's the angle of the front rake or caster angle, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to match this to that so that it stays square so you don't get stiction and you don't wear out your shock bushings. Let's get this mounted up. That's going to be awesome.
All right, so we officially have a roller. Got the steering rack mounted. I got the custom end links. I got the custom tie rods, which is awesome because those tie rods only cost at most 20 bucks each. So I'm super stoked that, that worked out. And the custom plates with the ATV suspension works out great. There's not gonna be much more weight on the front. So these are gonna be set up nice and they're at minimum preload on the springs. We have so much more preload to work with that I'm so confident this is gonna work out. Same with the back. The back is set at minimum preload and we're getting good absorption, good spring rates. Now the ground clearance is a little low on the back because I swapped the tires and I haven't reset the shock position. Now, as you know, these shocks are customizable for whatever ride height you want. This is sitting at about nine or 10 inches of ground clearance, which is where I personally like it. 10 inches of ground clearance will get you over most obstacles, especially if you're cross carting. And I have two separate shock mounts so that we can raise this up another three inches if we want to. We got the dashboard set up. Now it's just tacked in because there's a final driver fit up. I don't like to do that until the engine's in place, but I checked the steering geometry and it's, it's gonna work out great. It's gonna work out absolutely great. This thing is just turning out way better than I thought it would. And I, I, I had high expectations of the two-seater. I spent a long time designing this to make sure it was going to be fantastic. That it was gonna fit a multitude of drivers, whether you have long legs or you're really tall or, or you're an average guy. Like there is so much variable functionality to this. <laughs> VF. So the whole setup of this is working out great. This is exactly how I wanted it to be. You can use a variety of suspensions. You can use a variety of engines. There's plenty of room for anything that you want to bolt to this. It's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. I hope you guys are liking this. I hope your builds are successful. I'm hoping I'm giving you enough details for this. Um, I'm kind of making this series shorter and showing you more than telling you more because nobody likes to hear somebody drone on in a YouTube video, but it's all fairly simple stuff and I give you the ideas, I give you the, the parts you need, and I give you a quick how-to. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited about this one. You see, I just keep my booster seat in the passenger side because the first person that gets to ride in this is my daughter because she has wanted to ride with me since the start of all of this. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, keep checking in for updates because we're gonna keep building on this. Have a good one.